All right, guys, welcome back to another edition, this month's edition of Nerd Thuzzi's Poker Podcast. Uh, make sure to check out our sponsors, theslotsquad.com, the exclusive place, the number one place for legal streamers in the United States for streaming casino games, and they have all the best sign-up bonuses for all the casinos. So if you're like us and you play on these online casinos and you like doing it, playing poker and sports betting and slots and all that, go to theslotsquad.com for all the exclusives. Uh, get in there, get some free money, some free match bonuses, all the deposit bonuses. Take advantage of all that free money out there. Go check them out. They support us, so please help them out. Thank you. Other thing we'd like to do on our show is we'd like to do movie review. This one was actually voted by the, the people on Patreon. So if you saw me say before, patreon.com uh, slash nerdthusiast. It's like literally you can pay. There's different things you can pay a month, but you get exclusive content. And just for like literally a dollar, everything you subscribe to, like a dollar a month, um, you can help support our channel and you get to vote on things. So one of the vote topics was because we've done some movie podcasts in the past. Uh, poker related, we said, what movie po uh, movie poker related would you like us to do next? And the vote went to Maverick. So it had been a while since I seen Maverick. And let me start off by saying this. It still holds up. Bro, uh, listen, I mean, it we talk it about it. I'm a 90s kid. You know, I love movies in the 90s. Came out in 1994. And I said this before, like, there's certain movies that when you're flipping through and I see something, I'm always going to put on. Like, I see Rounders, I'm going to put it on. Yeah. I see Terminator 2, I'm putting it on. Predator, going on. Maverick is one of those movies. It doesn't matter if it's in the beginning, middle, or end. Um, I absolutely love this movie. Yeah, I'll do a little background and we'll kind of get into it a little bit here. Um, directed by Richard Donner. Obviously, it stars Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster as the main two characters in there. It was released May 20th, 1994 by Warner Brothers. Critical commercial success, over $183 million worldwide. Uh, got nominated for Academy Award for Best Costume Design. It's set, obviously, in the Old West. And it's about an old-time uh, road gambler named Brett Maverick, who basically is trying to get his money up to get into what would be like the World Series of Poker, but it's yeah. a main event on a... Uh, a, a steamboat. A steamboat. And it's the story of him getting there and like all the shenanigans that are going along to get to that point. And then he plays in the tournament um, and gets there. But if you've never seen it, because I was thinking about it. And so it's like some of this stuff, I'm like, ah, you know, everyone's seen this. But then again, I think about it. I'm like, we're old. This movie came out. So like if you're like right now, if you're 26 years old or younger, this was before you were even born. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of younger people there that probably have never seen this movie. And it is definitely worth checking out. Um, if you like cowboy movies, obviously it's cool, but it definitely is still relevant and it's like, you can watch it and, and again, it, it holds up. It's not like you see me like, oh, this just looks so old. It still looks really good. It, it plays well. There's a lot of funny parts in it. That's it. And that's it. What I hate, like if you go to IMDb, it's listed as a Western and or a thriller. And honestly, it should be listed as a Western and a comedy. It is a dude. It, because, there's a lot of funny parts in there. Because it, it's literally, it's, it's not, it's not a thriller. No. By any by any means, it's it's a funny movie. Like it's I don't want to say it's a spoof on a western, but in in some in some sense it is. Spoilers. 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 And it's based off of like a TV series that was played in the 1950s, right? So like they're doing a lot of nostalgia in it, and I don't know if if anyone watched it i'm sure no one's watched the tv show my grandmother actually watched the show mm. when she was younger and when maverick came out she recognized that james garner who is he's also in the movie is that his dad is it's that his dad he plays his dad in Which, the film we just gave a big spoiler alert so you never oh. <laughs> Oh, that's like the biggest spoiler. Okay, spoiler. We're going to, uh, before the title, we're going to have to put spoiler oh alert. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whatever. It's too late now. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> spoiler. It's his dad. Anyway. But you know what, dude? It's one of those, it was one of those spoilers you never saw coming. No, you never, you never yeah, saw it coming. It, it definitely, I'll, make, oh I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the title. Don't worry. I'll put spoilers in the title because that's the big thing. But, um... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. there's like two there's really like two main poker scenes in the movie. It's it's I wouldn't consider it a poker movie, but it's the whole thing is built around Based this on this game, the on big the game. game. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, the first one is in the beginning and it's it's pretty funny. He shows up into a like a local little game and uh, he's trying to get into the game. 
And, you know, I could see this happening, too. It's like, you know, you got a bunch of hard asses, and they're like, you see some kind of flashy dude, and you're like, eh, we don't want you in our game, dude. You know, we don't know who the hell you are. So he kind of makes them a deal and says, like, listen, I'll lose for the first hour, and, uh, you know, if you let me in. And well, he can... angles, he yeah. angles them. <laughs> yeah. Like, he absolutely angles them. That's what I love. And, like, I didn't get to it. But, like, James Garner, going back, he actually played oh, Maverick the original. In, the, in the original. Anyway, but that's what I love about Mel Gibson's character in the movie is that he plays the role so well yes. of like just just like the buffoon, but at the same time he's like you know that he's got an edge on, yes. on everything. He plays dumb in all these scenes. There's a lot of scenes he, that's his, that's his style. He plays dumb and but he's very sharp about it what he, he's got a plan behind what he's doing. And there's so many times in the movie that there's like a scene you're like oh shit he now and then like you're like oh he had a plan, like the Indian scene. I'm oh, like, I love that. Part, yeah, when they dude. roll up and you're like, oh, they're about to, and he starts like talking to him. Oh man, it's so <laughs> funny. Like the, you know, but then Jodie Foster plays a great role in it too. She does. She's like this. Um, she's a rogue gambler as well. Like a Southern Belle. Yeah. yeah. Well, but she's like a hustler though. She. She's also yeah. She's like a con man. Yeah. yeah. So she's a con artist herself, and they're like both conning each other, and it's funny because they keep stealing each other's stuff. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of comedy in it, too. But then they go into it, and the goal is – and I was trying to, like, try to figure out, like, what that would be worth today. But the main event is $25,000 buy-in, and it's set in, like, the 1840s, I guess, or something. I don't, I don't know the exact time frame when it's set, but it's probably about, like, 1840s or um, 1800s is one of the uh, time frame. Let me see if I can see real quick. But uh, they're trying to get into this $25,000 tournament. So I'm like, what is that – what would that be today? Like – what would that be the equivalent to? Like half a million dollar buy-in? No, that's how much it was because there was there was twenty people. There's there's twenty no, people in the tournament. I know what I'm saying is it was a twenty five thousand dollar buy-in oh, to get saying. in. What would the, what would be today? Probably like five five mil, maybe even more. Like something ridiculous. Um, yeah. So I don't know what that'll equate to today. Someone's gonna have to comment below and figure out it's the probably math. Probably ten x of value, I would think. Yeah. So some, I don't know something. Well, 10 X would be two hundred fifty thousand, be a quarter million buy in then. No. Oh, you talk I'm talking about the prize pool. I'm oh sorry. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Saying. I was gonna say, yeah. So the prize it was probably yeah, it was probably like a quarter million buy in. Be like a super high roller today. Is yeah. exactly what it'd be. So they're trying to get into this like super high roller event, twenty five thousand dollar buy in. Um, and they're trying to get there. He's short money, so he's trying to do some like side hustles to get his money up to get there. And it's all the shenanigans that go along with getting there. And then you know, just when you think it's going to go right, there's, like, all these plot twists and, like, who's screwing each other over and, mm -hmm. like, everyone's got an edge and, and things like that. So, I mean, it's spoiler alert, so we're already there, but we'll talk about, I guess we'll talk about the final hand. You want to talk a little bit about that from what you can recall from it? Uh, so, they're what? They're down the three-handed? Yeah, so, they're like, the main protagonist. Um, the, and then the, the villain. Who's, the villain. You'll, and the, you'll know who he is. And he's... Uh, uh, Doc Ock. Andrew Andrew Molina is that his name? Yeah, he's from uh, Spider Man series. Yeah, yeah Doctor yeah. Ock. You'll recognize you actually you won't recognize. I him didn't because, recognize him at first because I think I think he's way younger in it. Yeah, him. and they also I, I I think that they put makeup on him to make him look a little bit more Hispanic. Oh, okay. Um, and then the guy who's actually running the tournament, he's his name in the movie is the Commodore. So they're down to three handed, um, and he sees. Maverick sees the dealer cheating. Yeah, okay, yep. So he realizes that the hand's a setup, okay? So they're playing five-card draw. And so the main captain of the boat, he's got quad eights. Yeah, no, he has two small pair. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, he pulls that because I got two small pair, eights and eights. Um, and then the other dude, the main villain, uh, he's got a straight flush to the seven. Mm-hmm. Now, Maverick, she's what I understand, though, because Maverick's got 10 Jack, Queen, King of Spades, right? And he needs one. He needs the Ace of Spades. So I guess I guess he assumed. I guess they assumed because he's going to be dealt a final card, and it obviously isn't going to be the Royal that he was supposed to be dealt. So I guess he assumed that he was just going to be pinning a lot of money and drawing to this hand. Well, every, they were all, all, all three of them were all in before the, before the deal. No, no, he gets the final card and he doesn't look at it, and then he goes all in. But he asked for a new deck. He's like, he's like, I'll take, he's like, I'll take one card, but I want it from a new deck, and I want him to deal. Yeah, yeah. And then they get a new deck. No, no, they don't get a new deck. He just slides it off the top because he, he goes, he goes, I can't allow you a new deck, 
but you can choose a dealer. And then he goes, I choose you to deal. And then he goes, okay, I want one off the top though. Yeah. So I was trying to do the math. Okay. So it's like this, right? Because you have one card left. So obviously a nine of spades or an ace of spades is going to give him the winning hand. So that's two cards giving him a winning hand. And he's already seen one. I guess he discard probably because it's a five card draw. So he's already seen one card. Those guys have both seen um, five cards each, right? So that's 11 cards out of the 52-card deck, right? Yep. So there's 40 cards left, and he has two cards that will make his hand, pretty much, that he knows, like, he knows it's a setup. Yeah. So he knows in his head he needs that ace or nine. He already knows this. So there's two cards out of 20. So he be, or uh, out of 40, right? Did I say that right? Out of 40 cards, give or take. So he knows that he has about a 1 in 20 shot that that top card is the card he needs. But he knows that because he was dealing from the middle of the deck, that those cards are probably towards the top because he doesn't want him to base deal or miss deal those. So realistically, he had like a 1 in 10 chance of pulling that card. Yeah. And I he, mean, the, you know. The way, I don't think. Again, we overthink, I'm overthinking. You have to watch it a couple times. Like. The Commodore and yeah, the Commodore that was the Commodore name. and Angel was his name. Yes, yes, Angel. They were working together. Yeah, which we didn't know. Another and spoiler alert! God! <laughs> Spoilers everywhere. Kill me. <laughs> they're all working together. Oh it's all God. fucked up. But the, the, they're working together, and you don't find that out until after afterwards. Mm. It was a bunch of two time, and everyone was yeah, stabbing each other time. in the back. Yeah. But anyway, long story short. He does this. He does this trick where he puts his hand over it, and then he takes the card and flips it over, and he throws it in the pot. It was like the perfect ending to a story. And imagine being like, you know, thirteen, fourteen year old kid mm -hmm. watching that thing. You're like, what? Like you don't know like the whole gist behind the movie. That's why I loved it so much. Is like the ending was so great. There, there's a couple other things that um, I went to throw in there, and one of them was kind of if you watch it now. And what's funny because my son picked up on it, but he didn't understand why. And so if you're watching now, you probably wouldn't understand this. But um, And they didn't put it into the credits until you actually saw the movie. So at the same time uh, this movie came out, the other big movie that Mel Gibson was a part of was the Lethal Weapon series. Yeah. Well, Richard Donner, the 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 director of, of this movie, yeah. directed Lethal Weapon. Yeah, so yeah. there's a scene where there's a bank robbery and in comes... Danny Glover as the bank robber, and there's a scene where they look at each other and they go, Duh. like, kind of like, do I know you? Like, yeah, it's and like an like, Easter egg. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like a little yeah. Easter egg. And then the other thing I didn't realize, so I just read it right now. The uh, one of the other bank robbers was Corey Feldman. Oh, I really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I just read it right now. They were uh, it was uncredited, but uh, Hal Ketchum, Corey Feldman, and Danny Glover. And there's an also there's a line another Easter egg. When Danny Glover goes to get on his horse and he's like running out with the money, he goes, "Ah, I'm too old for this shit." And that's his famous line from Lethal Weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. something. But my son picked on. Him. He's like, "Why are they looking at each other, Dad? Do they know each other?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's from another movie." So that was a little side thing. If you watch the movie like that, that was in there. Uh, that you it's funny you said that because I didn't know Corey Feldman was in it. I just saw that too but right now. Richard Donner also directed Goonies. Ah. There you go. So, yeah. So, like, little... See, that's so cool, man. Like, you know, doing that kind of stuff. I love when they do that stuff in movies, and they just throw, like, little cameos of people in there. Yeah. Like, you know. And it says, also, country singers also cameo, including Carlene Carter as a waitress, Wayling Jennings and Kathy Matea as a gambling couple with concealed guns. Reba McIntyre was in there? Yeah, she's in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, what part was she... She must have been in... Because when they're in the gambling scene at the end, with the, there's a huge crowd there. So, I'm sure there's a lot of people in there that I miss. Vince Gill... Janice Gill, we're spectators, Clint Black. So, yeah, there's a bunch of uh, different people in there. But, yeah, I, it still holds up, man. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, dude, how cool would that be if they did, a, like, I know they do gambling boats. You know, I knew that. I know they still have that down south, and there's that's still a thing. But that would be cool to have, like, an old-time championship, like, on a boat like yeah. that. That would be pretty cool. Well, I don't think I, – I think that the boat that they used – was like the last remaining steamboat in here, the United here States we go. or something the, like that. It was uh, okay. So here, um, all right. The steamboat used in the film, dubbed the Larn Bell, was the Portland. That's the real name. It's the last remaining Sternwell tugboat in the U.S. At the time, it belonged to the Oregon Maritime Museum in Portland. Over several several weeks, the boat was decorated to alter its appearance to resemble a Mississippi-style gambling boat, including the addition of two decorative chimneys. 
In August 1993, the production requested permission to film the scenes on the riverboat along the Columbia River in Washington State. The artificial smoke released by the poach boat's chimney was considered to violate air quality laws in Washington, Oregon, and required approval for the scenes before they scheduled filming in 1993. So there you go. A little background information there. Yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it again. I've seen it, I don't know, a dozen times. Yeah, yep. And it's still a fun movie. I mean, just to kind of wrap it up, like, don't let, I mean, don't let, obviously, I don't even want you to watch this because I already ruined it. But <laughs> if, you, if you're like, ah, whatever, I'm going to check it out, don't let the fact that it's a Western throw you off because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I hate Westerns. And it's like, it's not, yeah. it's not your typical traditional Western. Like that whole end of things isn't even like a part of the plot. It's, yeah, it's, there's it's, so much it's other everything stuff. else behind yeah. it.